This is our project. We decided to do a vertical windmill to generate DC power. Some of the things we were trying to figure out was how much it would cost us to build a small sized vertical windmill and how that would compare to the commercial windmills as far as cost goes and power output. And our main goal here was to measure how much power we could get out and we are decided to use a treadmill motor which is 1.5 horsepower to generate all of our power. And we decided our design would be much easier to use a vertical axis windmill. Uh, a vertical axis windmill is different than a horizontal windmill, the ones we typically see. Um, a vertical axis windmill is a little bit, it's more bird friendly, it's harder though and much, it's a little bit more inefficient to use than the horizontal windmills. The vertical windmills, the, one of the benefits of that is you can pretty much put them side by side right next to each other and they will not interfere with each other unlike the horizontal windmills. And the this design actually of the vertical windmills go, is one of the first windmills act, ever created back in the 1800s. And so that was much, that, that design was a lot easier to use and so we decided to pattern our windmill after that. To construct our windmill, we decided to use a large PVC pipe to catch the wind. We mounted this on some plywood board to hold it all together. We initially cut this into a circle, but then decided to cut out grooves so that the wind wouldn't catch as much and try to knock it off its base. Some other things we did was we mounted the motor below and then extended the shaft of the motor with a PVC pipe. We connected this PVC pipe to the plywood so that when the main part was spinning, the motor would spin as well, generating DC power. We also decided to achieve the spinning effect of the windmill to have a thrust ball bearing on the bottom of the windmill and the top of the base. And this enabled us to have a near fl frictionless uh, spin when the wind would spin it. And this worked very well, um, but as we as the as it would spin faster, the uh, windmill would begin to wobble, and so what we decided to do is take a 25-pound weight and place it directly on top and directly in the center of the the windmill, in between, in, so the shaft would go in between it, and so we can get a much higher velocity from the windmill. Our main goal of this project was to measure the power output from our vertical windmill. We decided to use about a 10 mile an hour wind for our measurements. This produced about 600 millivolts and we measured the resistance between the leads of our motor and we found that it was about 3 ohms. We used this to calculate the steady output and we measured that it was outputting about 118 milliwatts at any instant. Using that we calculated how much we could produce in a month and it turned out it was about 88 watt hours per month which was actually a bit smaller than we had hoped for. Now when we compare the cost of the commercial windmills of the day that are in the that go from anywhere from two to three thousand dollars to hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, our windmill was only a hundred dollars and we were only able to achieve about yeah, 118 milliwatt hours uh, and Compare that to the commercial windmills of the day who, that are able to get a much more, much higher uh, power rating. We wanted to compare the cost, how much, how long it would take hours to pay off versus the decades it would take to pay off of the commercial windmills of the day. But it turns out that hours actually will take about a few decades to pay off, same as the other ones. Overall, this project was a great learning experience and we had a lot of fun with it. We definitely learned that the commercial ones are a little bit more efficient, but we learned that you still can generate power from a homemade windmill and it was a great project overall.